Anyway, we don't really have the things we need to break most cyclocks, so we have to go somewhere else at first. We're going to find that outfit that Regina is missing. And it was in Moe's room. Moe's not here! Well, no, we know that he's in the cafeteria. What's that? I hear something. S stop it, Nick! You're scaring me! Nick! It's money! That monkey's gotten his hands on something again. That's it! That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? Alright, time to take on this monkey attorney style. It's time to spank the monkey. I don't think it matters what I pick here. That means a lot to Regina! A real man wouldn't make a little girl cry! Oh god! I tried to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. I really did. Well, it's a monkey. So it was kind of stupid to try to talk man-to-man -to, -man to him. Nick, what's that? I swiped it while Money was distracted. Really? You're really on the ball today, Nick. He's always on the ball. Let me see it, let me see it. You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try in Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace and quiet. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it! What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh well, guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. Not to mention it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. Considering the fourth Ace Attorney game, yeah, pretty close. Also, it's going to be hilarious in a few minutes that it doesn't fit Maya. Too much clicking. Here you go, Regina! Yay, thank you! You really got a pack for me! Don't mention it! I love you, Mr. Attorney! Uh, it's... nothing. Oh no! The sparkles are turning him heterosexual! Get away from her, Phoenix! No wonder guys melt too much in front of this girl. Hey, Regina! That costume's yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. This costume? This isn't mine. It was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the line she told us about. That's right. Maya is apparently so fat, she can't wear a vest made for a full-grown lion. Seriously. Oh, the one that someone killed. Let's talk about dead animals. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right. My dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down, and then he opened his mouth. You know. Go! Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait! You put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. The people in the crowd always loved seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. You sure they were screaming because they loved seeing you do that? Anyways, what was the bad thing? Oh yeah, Leo bit someone during that practice. R R Regina! Everything was alright though, right? No, it wasn't all right. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. I agree. I feel sadder about dead animals than I do about dead people. Anyway... Do I have enough no for most... 
Actually, let's show her my badge and Leo to see if there's anything more. What about this? What can you tell me? Uh, I'm not really good at figuring out hard things. Really? You too? But you're such a good talker. I never expected Maya to make a new friend in a strange place like this. Stop that bouncing. Hey, she has nothing to say about the dead lion. Yeah, let's try to break Moe's cyclock. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at the circus? Okay, okay. There's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there! Some juicy burgers! Let's eat instead! Unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Grilled chicken sandwich. I'll be honest, I do like the smell of meat cooking as long as it isn't too long. Actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident. This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would it? I heard a little bit about it from Regina. Leon made a mistake during a performance, right? What? Hmm. I told him so many times. You shouldn't be doing dangerous performances like that. Putting their head inside Leon's mouth was part of an act. But Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that the ringmaster went along. He could never say no to her. Terrible parent. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo, don't clam up on me now. Why did Leon bite on the head? Uh, who did Leon bite on the head? Oh, I promised I wouldn't say anything. You promised? He's involved in this, too. He's involved? Mo must be talking about... Mo, is this the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything? It must have been Akro, right? <laughs> How did you know? Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. N no way! I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Akko. It's just like you said. You know, the accident. Did someone die? No. It would have probably been better if he had. What? How, how would that have been better? He's still alive. But when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He'll never recover from the coma that he's in. Coma? All he does now is lay in his bed at the hospital. That's all he's ever going to be able to do. I see. How is he related to Akho? He's his brother. Huh? The person who got bit was Akho's brother. Brother? They were an acrobat team of brothers. Akro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Kind of... Unimaginative. Anyways, they were an incredible team, cut down at the same time. Um, who is Akro's younger brother? Strong Dingling, but everyone always called him Butt. He fell in love with Regina, trying to win her love with his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. I I'm not. I seriously am not. 
six months ago, while we were practicing. All of a sudden, Bud blurts out, Let me perform with Leon! Why did you do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was... smiling. Oh, look at the cute little lion. You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bent down, he was smiling. You know, if he was biting down like that, I'd expect the head to be severed. Some sick grin. No way! That's impossible! A smirking lion. A flying murderer. Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all of these incredible events? Nick, can lions smile? Well, I don't know about lions, but I have seen cats whose faces look like they are permanently grinning, so... Yes? Um... We never told the police about the incident. The circus would have shut down if we had. The next day, Ringmaster took Leo out and shot him with a rifle. I'm glad that the Ringmaster is dead, as I would have shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. But all this truthfulness has put me in the mood for a burger. Here, you two have some pepper. There he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. <laughs> nice! What a wonderful sneeze! Huh? You think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana! That's basic clownsmanship! I don't remember her slipping on a banana. Maybe because I didn't check out the banana in this room while he was there. Girlie, I know you gotta understand that. Nick, I think I'd make a good clown! Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. Hehe, <laughs> does Regina sneeze with pepper too? She does! Bad would always tease her with pepper. Bad? From my point of view, those two always looked so perfect together. They looked perfect together, huh? Well, I already showed her the seasoning bottle. Uh, I doubt she has anything new to say. Anyway, I think we can break a cold psych lock now. Ah, Mr. Wright. Back again, I see. Well, he did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? We're back because Akko's hiding why his legs were endued. He was hurt in the accident six months ago. It would seem that he knows that we know. Well, well. Seems you've got things you want to talk about, so fire away. I have to ask you, how were you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice? Yes, unfortunately acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it secret. Akko, are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? Leon. Six months ago, you were attacked by a lion. No, he wasn't! That's when you were injured. I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked by a lion? That's what I'm saying. Well, you're wrong! I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. 
I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. I'm not sure if attack is the best word to be using. You must have battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight it to save someone. But... It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got the terrible injury. Mo, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about that from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. Behold my amazing detective skills! A slip of the tongue. They were an incredible team. Cut down at the same time. Cut down at the same time. That was where it slipped. That's how I figured it out. You two ended up wrapped in the same accident together, like always. Well, not really, because if something happened a certain amount of time ago, then pretty much everyone is involved there. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. I still haven't broken Uncle Cyclock. He must have an incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you, do, do you care to explain more? Akko, I know you are still hiding something from me. Maybe something you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive. Regina, you always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regin tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack Bat, are you? Leon was never taught a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina! I've got proof of it! What? What are you talking about? Oh, maybe I overdid it again! But if I can hand something over to Akko, maybe I'll... Um... Where'd you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. I guess I noticed it wasn't near around breakfast time. I always take Akko's breakfast in the morning. You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. I'm cold. My legs were injured by Leon six months ago. My younger brother Bat had a dare with Regina. A dare? An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid, too. But the line was very old to begin with. An age brought with a countless experience in doing that very trick. But nobody still stopped him from doing a stupid thing. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened. He just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor butt. When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up. 
What about that? He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. But and Regina, they were such great friends. Oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross! It's covered in blood! The scarf was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. He... Leon, obviously. What?! Why do you sound shocked? You already saw this and the information. The expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know! Most of the same thing! What do you think it all means? Hello, Francesca! I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. But the scarf is evidence in the trial! That is for me to decide. Isn't for the police to decide? I think we should begin our preparations, no Akko. Preparations? I've served a summons on Akko to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Akko will talk more at the prosecutor's office. This is not the only time where they misspell prosecutor's office should be prosecutor's apostrophe. Unless the office really is for one prosecutor and only one. Akko a witness? Come, Akko, let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. And he somehow leaves very fast. Now what do we do, Nick? How are we going to handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you, all full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. Good morning, Max! Oh, yeah. Good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. <laughs> don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. That's not a glass, you moron. Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie, my sweetie pie princess! You came to watch my performance today? Of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess you'll fly at the end? Uh... It's not that kind of show. Isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't... Uh, yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on. Or even where she is. Well, Max, looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today, I'm just a member of the audience. What fun for her to just be part of the audience. Good luck, Max. You're the best. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? Top them on into ya. Let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo. How low can you go? Mo. Top of the morning to you, governor! Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket. Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm, but then again, worms lack higher brain functions. Aha! 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 Here, Max. Brought you a present. Have some milk. Oh my. Thank you. So how are you today, right? Well... I've got the feeling that today I'm going to face off against a real criminal. You mean Akko? Wait a second. So... You, yourself, seem to think that Akko is the killer. Why do you think that? What makes you think that he would be capable of doing it? Why he would do it? Why the hell did you not say this in, in the previous day? Screw you, man. You think he did it? 
Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line. Literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to it already. It just means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you going to do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual psychological warfare. Psychological warfare? What the hell are you talking about? You never used that before. Today, we rely on evidence. It's the only way we'll get past Akko and to the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happens to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes, that's why I brought her here today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people become stars. Then you're a jerk. If she wants to believe that deaf people turn into stars, let her. It doesn't hurt her, it doesn't hurt everybody else. Just let her think that. Oh no, I'm running out of water. Quid is now in session. In the trail of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Kalma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness. Or shall I say, a new eyewitness. One that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. Shouldn't you... prove that before you bring in the new witness? In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work. Or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. It's funny because Akko can't walk. And I hate him and his birds. Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Akko. I'm employed as an acrobat at the Bear Big Circus. Where were you the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. It was just after 10 p.m. and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. It's kind of a contradictory statement to say that it was that person, but also giving a statement saying that basically says that's what he looked like, so that is why I think it was him. So there we have a contradiction right away. <laughs> to be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. No, it doesn't. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution need add. Shouldn't it be needs to add? All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. And once again, I demand you to show that explanation before you bring in a witness. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, did. 
Edgeworth totally knew when it was time for work and when it was time for pleasure. Do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Van Kalma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. I thought her iconic words yesterday were, It's not funny. Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. You said that you were resting in bed. One would as thus assume that you turned the lights off in your room, correct? That's correct. But there are safety lights around the outside of the lodging house. It's so bright sometimes it can make it hard to sleep. If that's the case, wouldn't it be a good idea to close some curtains? I never really thought of that. I guess that means I'm off to buy some curtains. <laughs> Sometimes I do make myself useful in these chambers. Oh! The witness will proceed with his testimony. Your room is on the third floor, right? Yes. And you said that you were resting in bed. That is correct. But you were still able to hear a sound from outside? I was indeed. Pressing Akko doesn't seem to get results. Maybe something was contradictory with what he just said. No. What's the matter, Mr. Wright? N nothing, Your Honor. Until I can find a clear contradiction, I should tread lightly. Are you sure it was a human being? It could have been a mannequin, or perhaps a large action figure. Well, setting aside the possibility of a mannequin, an action figure is plausible. You have no need to mince words with Mr. Phoenix Wright. Testify the truth, and only the truth. Just as if it were there with you that night. I believe it was a human. Damn, I just strengthened his testimony. I wonder if Uncle Steitman jives with the facts. No! The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So, with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see, but honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat as well as the cloak wrapped around his body. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. But maybe there was something fishy with his latest bit of testimony. There's a hu huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. She's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of a contradiction? Sometimes I hate the useless amount of text that this game has. You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. Considering the screenshot, although it was fake, you seem to be perfectly capable of looking out the window. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found on the scene. That's the Ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? 
Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. When did we ever find that out, or were we ever told? Which means, Akro, that you've been fibbing on the stand. Oh no, he didn't! Like always, someone has to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth, and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Akko himself. On this occasion? A accuses Akko? What in the world are you accusing him of? Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Mr. Wright, are you serious? Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> I think your trips to the circus have served you well. You seem to remember how to trick... to try and grab in an audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. Really? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. He is calm enough for it to always, almost be scary. He is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingling, do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. That's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of a murder of all things... See? Even the slipper of common sense makes it clear that the accusation is ludicrous. She's right! Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man! Phoenix is a poopy head! See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? If you're trying to drum support from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Fuck the peanut gallery. They're just mindless bobbleheads that explode at every tiny thing. Ugh. I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Akko is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to counter this as well? I can hear the defense now. Akko had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Akko have an accomplice? Technically, on things he did, but overall he didn't. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the, myster of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Fun Karma. What? You're not going to sucker me into this one. What are you blabbing about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. What... what are you getting at? Way to keep them on the toes, Nick! Now I'm going to have to prove him how it all fits together. Yeah, Phoenix has this problem that he comes to conclusions, and then he has to work backwards to make them fit, instead of the opposite. I have to show how Akko murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? Technically, what he has to do is first prove that he had the opportunity to do it, then that he had the chance to do it, or how he did it, and that he had the possibility of doing it. I know what I can't do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. All right! Then let's do it! Mr. Phoenix Wright, if this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Mr. Wright, I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? He was obviously here the entire time. That's a close room? 
Pretty simple, huh? Akhov wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. There's only one answer to that. Akhov didn't leave his room to kill the ki to kill the ringmaster. Are you nuts? What say you, Mr. Dingling? It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you proposed is impossible, yes, that's it. He said that you didn't leave the room to kill the ringmaster. Meaning that you could have killed him from your room, which you did, so it's not impossible. Unless he said you went outside to kill the ringmaster, which we know you can't without anybody's help. As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or to be the killer. Phoenix already said that he didn't leave the room to kill the ringmaster. Meaning he did it from there. You've got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Shut up, Maya. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? Shut up, Maya. But, Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? If I can't leave my room, I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. No, the ringmaster did that. How did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick! If you mess up here... She's right. I can't mess up here. I've got to give this one some serious thought. I'm sure that Akko killed the Ringmaster. And he killed the Ringmaster while he was in his room, no doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. I... well, I know how he did it. I'm gonna show the thing that I think it was. So what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust. And because it is life-size, it's also very, very heavy. Heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. See? This is how Akko was able to kill the Ringmaster. With the force of gravity and Maximilian's Gala Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. Quit using the word bust. Doesn't have any point in this game or this world. So you're saying the bust fell onto the ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were struck in a wheelchair, it would be incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible! Well, Akko is an Akkobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like the bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these judges? Well, I call that a loss for words. Thank you, Maya. Well, 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 Uncle, you can't run away from. Ah, how? I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix, right? What? Your Honor, the physical health of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Testimony, you say? Karma. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to stall for time. There is absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder, the prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Damn it! Why can't he see things my way once in a while? 
Mr. Jingling, I'm sorry, but we need you to testify about your physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. That woman will sink to any law to win the case. How are we supposed to be respectful towards Akho? I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat, and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus it would be unrealistic for me to draw the bust on him, don't you think? I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and carry it over to the window. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. Duh! I can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. Have you ever lifted up the bus before? No, I've never actually lifted up with my own two hands. But I should get to it, don't you think? I can't let money outdo me on this. Money? That crazy monkey has lifted Max's bus before? Quit it with your damn birds! Please continue with the testimony, Mr. Jingling. So, what have you been doing to keep in shape? Well, honestly, I've given up on training. I don't have any plans to return to the trapeze or the tightrope. You don't say. But, no offense, I'm not worried about losing to you in a race or anything. Neither am I, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I wouldn't lose either, Slowpoke! I mean, Nick! Whoa, 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 whoa. How did the discussion turn to me all of a sudden? I suppose you could say that I'm stronger than the average bear. Fun fact, Bear is gay lingo. And why is that? Because if I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. I still haven't gotten much feeling back in my legs yet. So you couldn't have thrown the bust out the window? How long do you think your recovery will take? You have to remember that the nerves were severed. I'm currently undergoing some extremely intense rehabilitation, but it's still going to take a while before I'm back to 100%. You know, if he says the nerves were severed, I'd expect that he would need surgery, and not just rehabilitation. If the witness was carrying the bust, he would not be able to see out below the window. Why do you say it would be impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see out below the window? Thus, there is no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick? Hmm? What if you turn things around? Maybe you think it's sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bust. That does make sense. If only I could prove it somehow. Prove that Akko knew the location of Ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. Akko. You didn't really need to lean out the window, did you? 
What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster said was going to be. Quite precisely, I may add. Objection! You silly hinting at things is pointless. Mr. Phoenix Wright, enough stalling. How about you show some evidence? But... but I did such a good job hinting. Yes, 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 hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box there? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding the box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that the theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bust came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lift up this wooden box. Which, which means that the answer to all these questions is not crystal clear. Y you mean... If the bust were to fall upon the point marked up by the wooden box... There would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. Really? I'm kind of sick and tired of yelling order. Finally, some of these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now we just gotta keep going, and there's only one way to go from here. Forwards. So the next question I have is, who placed that wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope, and then all he had to do was lower it down. As people have pointed out, the wooden box doesn't have a handle on top. It only has them on the side. It could be difficult to line a rope up around it and have it placed perfectly at where he wants it to be. Especially if he says that he can't lift the bust out of the window and look outside because it's so heavy. But this box is like 20 pounds. And the bust is... Well, it's made out of bronze. I don't know how heavy bronze is, but I'm pretty sure it's more than 20 pounds. So he would have to really calculate or be very precise in how he would drop it and where he would drop it, and then do the same with the bust. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you! Mr. Phoenix, right? Ow, ow, ow! The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he left at the box. That's why the box was so specially made. Specially made? Indeed. It was the most peculiar feature. The box has a remarkable weight. Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required... Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and lift it up with your body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means that no matter who you are, your head would be in approximately the same place. Fool! You know what, this just makes me think if I ever find a box that I have to pick up, I'm just gonna grab it by the side handles and slide it away. And then pick it up. Does she even bother to listen to me anymore? I've heard what you've had to say. I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Did you drop it? Did you drop the bust onto the ringmaster? That's not the bust, Your Honor. What are you talking about? Even if I had wanted to do such a thing, I couldn't. What? Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of this bust? Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I could not possibly leave the lodging house by myself. That means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bust from my window. 
However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Explain that! Don't forget, you said there was no accomplice. Ugh! Tell exactly how the witness could have carried the bust from the cafeteria. Yeah, we definitely have a problem here. But this is no place to get perplexed. I've got to get my wits about me and prove how things happen once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright, let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bust from the cafeteria back to his room? A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. For instance, he stole the ventriloquist's ring. So, are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own, and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Akro's room. Akro's room? But the bus was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. Akro? Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. Probably with a lot of dragging and clunking. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. Where is the bus in question at the moment? Um, I... I don't know. We are searching for it as we speak. This is a strange turn of events. If that monkey did not steal the bust, then what happens to this case? Well, in that event, something else must have been used as a murder weapon. Well... Or maybe this bust was the murder weapon, but it was used by accident. That's possible. Maybe I call some money's mon mountain of stolen goods and start to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Akko was the murderer. Possibility? Not that you actually, you know, prove that he did it. Mr. Wright's arguments are so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Oh! Don't seem so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud. You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix, right? And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. <sighs> That's right, I kinda did. There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. Considering what we heard yesterday, you'd think he would be doubted. That's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you now! I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this, and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The clown saw the murderer. Who was it, then? He saw Max's b Ow! I asked who was the other person Mo saw on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère, it does indeed have something to do with the question. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How is that possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? The silhouette he saw just happened to be wearing a coke. 
there's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bus. Or a cloak like that could easily get snagged on the bus if they came into contact. Idiot! Who in their right mind would put a cloak on the bus? It doesn't matter who put it on the bus. Just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak in the bus? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Oh, he caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? Uh, technically it was him. Fool! Him? You are saying it was the victim himself? Russell Berry? That's what I'm saying. I mean, the victim himself placed the cloak on the bust? Placed the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Raid? Explain yourself! Nick, do you really have a handle on all of this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night. Let's step back in time. Akro uses a rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust, and dangled the bust out of those bedroom window directly above the wooden box. I still think he would have to lean out a little bit to make sure that the bust was aligned with the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Akko took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. At the very instant that the bus hit the victim... I'm still kind of wondering if that would work with trajectory flying. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss von Karma. This circus isn't over yet. Unfortunately, it isn't. With a shock of impact, it threw up the cloak and it got snagged onto the bust. That's when the sound was heard by a witness and he took a look out of his window. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bust. Now, having completed the crime, Akro naturally went about falling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bus being raised with a cloak dangling on it. Primarily because, in his wheelchair, he couldn't see out of his window. So he just kept pulling the bus up. You'd think that with all the supposedly safety lights that are so bright, you'd think he would have seen the rope. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. This is like Kaito Kit. Only... not that drawn out. Now you know how the murder actually took place. And now you know who was able to drop the murder weapon from the from above the scene. It could only have been you, Akro. Akro's been playing mind games with all of us. Shut up, Maya. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long, wider tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? Evidence? In this court, only two things matter. The power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick! They say they want evidence! Shut up, Maya! 
just explained how there can only be one possible murder method. But there is still something unusual about Mo's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay, then. Use that and get out of this jam! That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence to the court that backs your claim. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. Um... Was it the note? I don't know. Or was it the seasoning bottle? I really don't remember what I have to point out here. Uh, let's try the seasoning bottle. Try again. Yeah, thanks. If that would have been silent for two more seconds, I would have screamed. Nick, you say the one evidence. Yeah, we're back to that. I fail to see what the problem is. Was it Barry himself? Um... But of course it was the fucking hat! The fucking hat is the thing that really brings everything together despite all the other problems in his goddamn testimony. Whatever. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Mo's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of those contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Mo said yesterday. He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing was wearing the silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the bust. Screw the freaking trick, just get me to the fucking long part where I have to prove that Uncle didn't have a motive to kill Russell Berry. Because he never intended to kill that guy anyway. The other contradiction? Remember what that ventriloquist said in court. He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. Honey, please. Don't make yourself look stupid. Can you do it, Nick? Shut up, Maya! I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bust. And we get to see this freaking thing again. Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bust, it means that the white roses went up on the back of the bust. Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not with because we're on the back side of the bust. Given the gift that we keep seeing, it would be more like that they were behind the cards and not on the back of the bust. Let this case end already. This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory just still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick! Then maybe Funkama will finally throw in the towel!
Well, so much for that theory. Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yes, I did. Is there something making you think that I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the Ringmaster. Anyone with any relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill a Ringmaster. Your Honor, I'd like to hear Akko's story. Learn about his relationship with the Ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Akko deeply respected the Ringmaster. Akko's motive... It seems that this case isn't over yet. Sadly, it isn't. Very well. However, I feel this is a good place to take a break. Please, my voice is starting to break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. This court will now take a ten-minute recess. <laughs>